lay the bike on this left hand side, making sure to put a container underneath the vent lines to catch any fuel spilling from the carburetor. To remove the clutch cover, first remove the brake pedal spring. Press down on the rear brake caliper. And then pull down on the rear brake pedal away from the cover. And using a screwdriver or needle nose pliers, put that in between the frame and the brake adjustment bolt. Uh, it's often easier to remove or loosen the oil fill cap before taking off the cover. Then remove the cover. Now remove the pressure plate, starting with removing the pressure plate bolts. Remove the pressure plate ring, spring, and pressure plate. Set aside the slider ring, the bell bell spring, and the pressure plate ring, as they will be reused in the install. Now remove the clutch pack, beginning with the friction, and then the drive plate. Using dental picks will make this process easier. You can also remove the clutch pack entirely in one move. Now remove the drive pins. The drive pins will be reused for the installation. Now remove the throw out. Next we'll be removing the center hub. With the bike in gear, you can use an impact gun to remove the center clutch nut. Remove the inner hub, making sure that the washer is put back. Now take the EXP disc and frictions and soak them in oil. Now check the condition of your dampers. You do this by placing your thumbs on the embossed part numbers of the inner hub and rotate the inner hub back and forth. If they are tight, they are in working condition. Next, remove the inner hub from the hub and remove the dampeners. If in working condition, they will be reused. Install the six OEM rubber dampers and inner hub onto the recluse outer hub. First start with the dampers, with the attachment point of the damper against the outer rim of the hub. For 450, SXF, and XCF models, use the supplied inner hub in place of the OEM inner hub. This is also an option for the other DDS models. Using your thumbs, press in the inner hub. If there's difficulty, you can use a dental pick to separate the dampers while pressing in the inner hub. Install the recluse inner hub. Install the tab washer. Install the OEM center hub nut. Now tighten the center clutch nut. Consult your owner's manual for your specific torque specs. Next, bend up the tabs on the tab washer. Next, seat the drive pins into the recluse outer hub. Install the first recluse tech plate making sure the proper orientation is followed. Next, install the recluse friction plate. Continue to install drive plates and friction plates. Now install the recluse EXP disc. Install the throw out. Now install the recluse lining plate into the pressure plate making sure that the orientation is correct. Using a thin layer of oil will help seat 
the lining plate onto the pressure plate. Install into the center hub. Install the OEM slider ring, making sure that the rounded portion is up. It also has a stamp marking the top. Now install the Belleville spring, cup side down. Install the pressure ring, flat surface up. And for specific model information and pressure ring setting, refer to the setup sheet in the manual. Install the provided recluse pressure ring bolts. Tighten the bolts loosely. Using a torque wrench, torque the bolts to the suggested torque spec. Using a dental pick, remove the O-ring from the OEM cover. Install the OEM gasket into the recluse clutch cover. Install the clutch cover. When installing the bolts, make sure that they're in the proper location. Now install the oil filler cap. Grab the spring using pliers or channel locks. Remove the screwdriver holding the brake lever down and reattach the spring to the clutch cover. Pump the brake to rebuild pressure to the rear brake caliper. Now stand the bike up. When bleeding the slave cylinder before installation, Back off the set screw until you see the first O-ring. Pour fluid into the banjo bolt. Now turn the adjustment screw in, maintaining a full brake fluid level until the adjustment screw bottoms out. Applying pressure to the slave piston on the back of the slave, turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise until the O-ring shows again. If there are no air bubbles, your slave has been bled properly. When removing the slave cylinder, leave the clutch reservoir cap on to eliminate clutch fluid loss. Prepare to remove the slave cylinder by removing the bleeder cap and loosening the banjo bolt. Remove the bolt holding the chain guard and lift the chain guard out of the way. Remove the two remaining bolts. Pull the slave and remove. Remove the banjo bolt from the clutch line. The OEM crush washers will not be reused. Install a new crush washer provided in your kit to the banjo bolt. Install the banjo bolt into the clutch line. Place the second crush washer on the underside of the clutch line. Screw on the slave. Clean debris away from the slave area before reinstalling the recluse adjustable slave. Before installing the recluse adjustable slave, make sure that the ball bearing is inserted inside the piston. Install the recluse adjustable slave. Tighten the banjo bolt. Prepare to bleed the clutch slave cylinder. Make sure that the clutch reservoir is perpendicular to the ground. Use the fluid recommended on the clutch reservoir cap when bleeding your slave cylinder. Remove the clutch reservoir cap. And the reservoir gasket. Fill the reservoir with the appropriate fluid. Attach the supplied bleed tube to the banjo bolt port and loop into a suitable container. Pump the clutch lever three to five times and then hold against the handlebar. Using the appropriate wrench, open the bleed port while continuing to hold the clutch lever at the handlebar. Air and fluid may flow from the bleed tube. Tighten the bleed port when pressure is lost. Slowly release the clutch lever and check the fluid level in the clutch master cylinder 
Fill if necessary. Repeat steps until air no longer comes out of the bleed port. Remove the bleed tube and wrench. Reinstall the bleed port cover. Install the reservoir cap. Using the long end of a four millimeter Allen key, turn the adjuster screw clockwise until it stops under moderate pressure. You are trying to feel for a point at which the throw out will start to lift the pressure plate. This is called the starting point. Once you have found the starting point, turn the adjuster clockwise one full turn. This is not your final setting, but it is a good reference point for using free play gain to find the correct setting. Now that we've found the starting point, we're going to check for free play gain. This is not your final setting, this is just to verify that you can feel for free play gain. For first timers, we're going to start by using the rubber band method. Take the rubber band, wrap it around the grip, and hook it to the lever, making sure your bike is in neutral. Start the bike. Now remove the rubber band and try checking free play gain with your hand. Using light pressure, take the slack out of the clutch system and rev the motorcycle. Now that you know how to check for free play gain, locate the hash mark on the adjuster screw. Turn the adjuster screw clockwise, three tick marks. Now we're going to check free play gain again. If you're new to Recluse products, the rubber band method might be your first choice for checking free play gain. Now try using the hand method. And now you're ready for the break-in procedure. <laughs>